guys are ridiculous. These guys are ridiculous. Now, how about them damn Celtics? And we are back with another episode of How About Them Celtics. Sam and I are here recording on Wednesday, June 7th. Uh, and we got plenty of Celtic stuff to talk about. But the first one, is, it, I mean, it's technically not Celtic stuff, but it is Celtic stuff because we're going to make it Celtic stuff as any good Celtics podcast would. Chris Paul is being wa- waived, maybe waived. Chris Haynes says he's being waived. But Sham says they're deciding what to do with him, whether it be a trade or, or a wave and they stretch his contract or they waive him and resign Who's him. Who's first? I think Chris Haynes is was first. Okay, so Chris Haynes for once was first, but, but he was, was he also wrong? wrong. Well, was he wrong? That's the question. It sounds like he was wrong. Chris Haynes was at 516. Shams was at oh man, I don't have the tab up. <clears throat> I think Shams was like a few minutes later. Let's see. Did um, uh did Chris Haynes Sh- yeah, Shams was an hour later. Okay, Sh- did Chris Sh- Haynes put up an article about this, though? I don't think so. He's Bleacher Report now. Yes, I'm on I'm on Bleacher Report. Yes, he did. Okay. And? Oh, no, he did not. Okay. <laughs> or did he? No, he, he just tweeted it. Gotcha. And then somebody else on Bleacher Report wrote an article about it. Wrote an article about where he could go. And so- they also wrote that, like, everybody else said no. <laughs> What do you mean? Like, so the Chris Paul, this is the article from Bleacher Report. The Chris Paul Erica, era, my goodness, the, in fairness to me, the uh, author's name is Aaron, not Erica. So I really don't know what I'm saying. The Chris Paul era in Phoenix has come to a close. In a surprising move, the Suns will reportedly waive the veteran point guard, according to Bleacher Report and TNT's Chris Haynes, making him a free agent. Haynes also discussed Paul's next steps and it embeds his tweets. Chris Paul plans to play for several more years and is eager to help a team contend for a championship, sources say. But yeah. then the article goes, according to Shams of The Athletic, the Suns are still, quote unquote, exploring multiple options with Paul, in addition to waiving the point guard, including a trader stretching his contract. And then they cite Woj. ESPN's Adrian Wojnarowski reported Paul's con- uh, Paul continues to want to return to the Suns as the team explores options with his future. So essentially, they just said, "Yeah, Chris Haynes is our guy, but just in case he's wrong, here are a couple other reports." <laughs> because usually, when Chris Haynes breaks news, he's just reporting on what Shams and Woj have to say. <laughs> and it's funny now that he was first; everybody's like, uh, "I don't know if he was actually right about this." It's weird because, like, you have to imagine they all get their sources from different places. Like, Shams is more like the agents tell him; Woj is more like the teams. It's it feels like usually Chris Haynes is like the players tell him, but like in this case, it sounds like, I, I, like maybe Chris Paul, maybe he said like, Oh, we're having discussions and he interpreted it weird. Like, I don't know what's happening. It's definitely weird. Like this bleach report article says Chris Paul is leaving the Phoenix suns. Probably. And then the probably just links to Shams's tweet <clears throat> about it being maybe. So they're just, just like funny. overlooking their own guy. Yeah. But it, it, it's, it's weird, but it feels like a, I don't know what I want to put. Maybe like 60% chance he'll be back in Phoenix on a new contract or something. And then like a 40% chance he'll either be traded or waived. But regardless, the news that made headlines and and swept up the Twitter world for a good hour there and still probably now is that Chris Paul could be leaving Phoenix, which would probably make him one of the more sought after free agents on the market when you consider that. He's probably not going to command a huge contract considering his age. He's still very capable of leading an offense, even if he's not the same level he was in the prime of his career. Um, He would be a nice piece uh, on the bench or even as the starter on a lot of contending teams. Like you look at the Bulls, they'll probably be in the mix. They could, they could really use a point guard. You look at the Lakers. um, Obviously the connection is there. I'm sorry. Uh, What? The Bulls are not a contending team. Well, a team that needs a point guard. A playoff Chris caliber Paul plans to play for card. several more years and is eager to help a team contend for a championship. You know who that I, isn't? The Chicago I, Bulls. I'm naming teams that could use a point card that are going to sign him, right? Because, I mean, you look okay. across the league and most right, of the fair. teams. Well, I mean, what is he to sign with? The, like, <laughs> is he to sign with a team that already has a point card? I'm just looking at teams that could use a point guard. Motherfucker. Like, <laughs> what the fuck are we doing here? Come on. Um, <laughs> the Lake, Lakers will probably go after him. Obviously, he has the connection to LeBron James. Um the banana. You look boat. 
Who doesn't yeah. love that? You look at the Sixers, yeah. maybe if James Harden leaves, uh, they bring in a Chris Paul. Um, but Celtics Twitter obviously looked at it and said, oh, but make him a Celtic. So, I mean, we can talk about that. The first thing I'll say is Celtics already have too many guards on the roster. They do have three, <laughs> four of you count Pritchard, who doesn't want to be in the team anymore. Yeah. And while I do think it could be a nice fit in terms of leading the offense, and a lot of people always say, oh, get someone like Chris Paul to lead the Celtics. Well, now you can get Chris Paul. If the Celtics were to go after Chris Paul, which again would have to be on the MLE, a sign and trade, or for the minimum, because they don't have cap space, like they can't just down sign for the contract, minimum, <clears throat> would be fine, or even the MLE would be fine. But yes. the point is, if they brought him in, they would almost have to trade a Marcus or 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 a Derek or a Malcolm because or you Malcolm. just can't yeah, eyeballs you just, for you. Well, honestly. It makes Malcolm, you wonder. Get would ready you... to learn cactus, buddy. <laughs> That's what I was gonna say. Would you do a sign and trade where it's Celtics take on Chris Paul? Give up? It would have to be like Malcolm Pritchard and Gallinari. Would the trade have to be just to match the salary because he makes thirty million dollars? If right? I'm the Celtics, I'm not doing anything to get Chris Paul on this team unless it's a new contract. I don't want okay. his current contract. Does his current con? No, he must only have one year left if they're willing to waive him and stretch it. Uh, I don't, I think he has two years. No, he has two years. So he's next year for 30.8 and the year after for 30, but the next year is also non-guaranteed. So I I think what it is, is, and I can double check is next season is 30.8, but if they waive him, it's only 15. And the year after that, I think is just fully non-guaranteed. So you could just, you know what I'm saying? You could get rid of him. You could waive him and it would be worth nothing. So for Phoenix, it's worth it. But I mean, if I'm the Celtics, I'm not giving up an asset to also take on, $30 $30 million of Chris Paul, who you're not going to waive this year. If you waive him next year, you still have to pay that 15 million. Like, no, thanks. no, no, no. I, I'm saying, I think this, like if you waive him now next year, you'd have to pay 15, but the, like the year after that, I think, I think if you waived him, it would just be like fully non-guaranteed, not like 15 non-guaranteed. Like I think the last year is a fully non-guaranteed year. still like that's still $45 million at least that you owe to Chris Paul. No. Yes. He makes what $30 million dollars this se- upcoming season. Yes, and then I'm saying the year after that, say they waive him next summer, I think the next year is fully non-guaranteed, as in they wouldn't pay him $15 million. They could pay him zero. They could just wait. So him. the $15 million is this year? Yes. Why did you say it the way you said it before? You said $30 million for this year, and then the year after 15 and then the year after that, nothing. Because if they traded for him, they would have to pay him $30 million. Because you can't. Right. Yes, and then That's after the that, it would be nothing. Exactly, but it wouldn't be 45. I don't know where you're getting 45 from. 30 plus 15. Yeah, but there wouldn't be a 15 is my point. I'm saying if they traded okay. for him, the Celtics could pay him 30 million next year if they traded for him. And then if they didn't work out, they could just waive him. I'm, I'm going to double check because maybe it is another. another I don't know. 15, but I mean, I am the last guy to talk about contract stuff other than thinking contracts are overpriced. <laughs> I do not know a ton about that. I I thought the way you were explaining it was the upcoming season they would pay him thirty million, and then the year after they would have to pay fifteen, even if no. like that's the the fifteen was guaranteed. No, I, I'm okay. I'm pretty sure the last year of his deal. Yeah, so twenty three twenty four is okay. thirty million, but you could waive him and only have to pay him fifteen, which is what the Suns are contemplating. Yes. 24 okay. 25 is 30 million again, but it's zero guaranteed. So you could wave him and pay nothing and just get him gone. Okay. Well, listeners, I'd imagine a lot of you had a similar process to me, not knowing the contract rules. So you're welcome. <laughs> that was a whole um, exercise where I pretended not to know. And <laughs> Jack explained it to me like I was a dummy. And it uh, I mean, now you I guys just pulled it up understand. on Spo- check out Spo track. That's <laughs> I, I, sh- I use it there, but Um, if the Celtics were to bring on Chris Paul, it would have to be either a a trade or signing him for the MLE, which will be, I think only $5 million. I think it's going down from last year, which is weird. I don't know if that's a CBA thing, but if you look at Spotrack, it was six point, (laughs) excuse me, four, nine this past season, which is what, or four, seven, maybe, which is what they gave Gallinari, but it lists the upcoming MLE as just $5 million. Um, and since the Celtics are a tax team, that's what we'll have to pay. So, um, which other teams could could beat because the non-taxpayer Emily is, is more money, so he could get more money. Um, or 
it would have to be a minimum contract, which would Chris Paul sacrifice money in order to come to the Celtics? I would say only if he's guaranteed the starting job. And at that point, you'd probably have to trade Marcus and or Brogdon. To be honest, I think if the Celtics get Chris Paul, you kind of have to trade Marcus because he's not going to want to go back to a bench role in, in fair to him. And he can't play shooting guard. He just can't. Well, I don't know if he can't go back to a bench role. I don't, I don't know. Marcus is a pretty flexible guy. I don't I think. think he'd want to. I and I don't think he'd want to. It's all as yet to be played out. I don't know. I don't know for a fact. Well, would you, if you could, Marcus came I'll, off the bench for years. I know, and, and then good. they finally made him the point guard, and they were good. And I don't. And he think was good. He wanted. I know, but I I just don't think he would want to go back to bench role. And also at the same time, I don't know if he's as valuable in a bench role. He might not be. And I'll, I'll he, ask he you this. He still could be an energy guy. I suppose, but with Derek White, with Malcolm Brogdon, if they don't trade him, right? Like, at that point, you're getting a lot of guards. And if you're going to bring I mean, Smart somebody's and White off the bench. Some, somebody is gone. If Chris Paul joins the team, one guard is gone. The knee jerk is Brogdon, to me. that That's what I think. Mm-hmm. Okay. And if you get rid of Brogdon, his value is the highest it could be. His performances where he was bad can be chalked up to an injury. He just won six men of the year. Okay. Good value. Maybe you can bring in a wing worth bringing in off the bench. That could help you. You could use that. You could slide Marcus back to the bench. Or even though you don't believe he's a shooting guard, you could try it. Who knows if it works? Probably doesn't. Chris Paul's not shooting a lot of threes. Uh, Yeah, Marcus is better with the ball in his hands. We agree. So I'll ask you this, and I'll phrase it two ways. Scenario one, you get Chris Paul, but you trade Marcus. Scenario two, you get Chris Paul, you keep Marcus on the bench. Or scenario three, I'll I'll say you don't get Chris Paul. Like what? Like if you had to choose between the three, like you know, what I'm saying, like how badly would you want Chris Paul on this team? Do you think it's worth it, or would you rather just ride it out and, and reshape the roster with Marcus as the starting point? The biggest thing for me is to see what the scenario you're getting Chris Paul is. Say, say it's want... in the MLE. Say it's the middle ground. Say it's the MLE. The MLE? Five mil. All five mil. It's tough to pass that up for $5 million. Mm-hmm. So it's such a small piece of your cap. Yeah. If you're bringing him in, I think it allows you to move somebody to make the team better. Whether that's Marcus Smart or it's Brogdon, it's probably not going to be Derek White. That's yet to be seen. But you yep. definitely could get something worthwhile back for either one of those guys. As much as I would hate for it to be Marcus, I want him to be a Celtic for life. I want to see his number get retired. I want to see him win a title here. I don't know. I guess in that situation, the deal's right. But if I could pick any, it would be Marcus comes off the bench. New trade Brock. I think that's interesting. I- I've been of the... <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry. Sorry to the comments who uh, hate when I cough. Uh... <laughs> I've been of the mindset that like, as much as I do like Marcus, and like you said, like he's been my favorite player since I started rooting for the Celtics outside of the Jeff Green years, uh, <laughs> there comes a point where you have to shake things up significantly. And if that's not going to be Jalen Brown, which is sounding like it's not, and that's fine because he's a star, it, it might be best off to explore options trading Marcus Smart because you talk about value. His value probably would have been at its peak last season when he won DPOY. True. Th- this year, it's still probably pretty high teams around the league probably want a guy like Marcus on their roster. And if you're going to get a Chris Paul type rolling out a lineup of Chris Paul, Derek white, Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, and then Rob or Al is probably a, with like a bench of Malcolm Brogdon, Grant Williams, and then the other Robert Al. that might sound a little bit more well-rounded than Marcus off the bench just because of the shooting Brogdon gives, even though I don't like Brogdon <laughs> as a fit on this team. I like him as the six man. I don't like him rolling with the closing lineups and in crunch time. Does that make sense? And yes. I, I think that's how he was utilized a lot. And if Chris Paul is in, I think it should either be Chris Paul in closing lineup or Derek white as the point guard in the closing lineup and double bigs or grant. Right. And so I, I think putting Brogdon in that six man role would be more valuable and better suited for the Celtics just because of the shooting. Uh, Cause Chris Paul is not giving you much of an outside shot at no, this point not. in his career. So having that over Marcus might be more valuable at the same time. I, I at this point, it just might not even be worth it to get a Chris Paul. Like the $5 million is cool, but at this point, I, I think you roll with Marcus as the starter, 
Derek White in there too, either off the bench for double bigs or in the starting lineup next to him. You trade Brogdon and then you have those two guards with maybe you get a guard back or you sign a minimum point guard to be your third string guy. You get the wing back for Brogdon and then that'll sort of be your core rotation. Uh, and if you are trading Brogdon, maybe you do go back to double big so you can bring one of Derek or, or Marcus off the bench. But I just don't know if it's worth adding to the glutton of guards the Celtics have on the roster at this point. Like as cool as Chris Paul is and as, as fun it was it would be to watch him run the offense, like especially and you know what? Maybe this is a problem, but especially with how much the Celtics like to just give Jason and Jalen the ball, like having Chris Paul in the lineup wouldn't be effective. That I think is true. I think that's a good point. And I but think that's part of the reason back. Phoenix might want to get rid of him because that's what they're gonna have to deal with too with KD and uh, that's true. Anyways. To circle back to the Brogdon thing, I think bringing in Chris Paul makes it easier to move on from Brogdon. Because so? you're you're getting essentially a free guard. You are. If, if he signs an MLE, you're getting sure. for nothing. That supposedly can give you good minutes. Well, that's yet to be seen. We don't know. We haven't seen him play for the Celtics, if he ever will. But it does mean you're more flexible to move on from one of three guards, all of whom who have value of some sort. Mm -hmm. Whether, again, it be Brogdon, Smart, or White, who it won't be White. That's somebody Fingers that crossed. you can use to bring in some real help. Brogdon, yeah. Well, well bringing in Chris Paul to really not lose a ton of depth. Of that I, think Marcus, I think Marcus has more value than, than Brogdon. I don't know. I, it depends who you ask, I guess. Depends what team it is. It depends on the team. <laughs> You're right. I don't know. I, to, to, we talked about this for 17 minutes. To put it bluntly, I don't think Chris Paul will be a Celtic at the start of next season. Yeah, I don't think so. But it, With it, it was worth Shams discussing. With what and Woj are saying, it doesn't, I don't know if he's leaving Phoenix. I think he ends up in Phoenix. If he doesn't stay in Phoenix, where do you where do you think he goes? I, I mean, Lakers. I really do think you have to at least mention the Celtics. Yeah, sure. For I, I think the Lakers wants to play to help a team contend for a championship. That's the Celtics. Also, I think the Lakers Bleacher Report probably. has their top spots. Uh, Boston, both LA teams, and then Milwaukee. Milwaukee yeah, makes, makes sense. zero sense to me. Yeah, uh, I see it. You run CP, Drew Holiday, <laughs> Chris Middleton, Giannis, Brooke Lopez, if they resign him. It's a solid yes. lineup. Um, I think the Sixers make a ton of sense too, if they lose Harden. Um, that Harden stuff is so so weird. So weird, right? Yeah. I don't know. Uh, yeah, no. I I guess those are the teams that make sort of the most sense. I think the Pelicans could be cool too, uh, if they get uh stuff going. Even if they don't bring Zion back, like him, CJ, Brandon Ingram, like they they would have a good team there. Uh, but we can't move on from the Chris Paul stuff. Uh, and move into some other news we, we kind of missed uh, the other day. The Celtics are reportedly looking at Charles Lee, <clears throat> Milwaukee Bucks assistant, according to Jake Fisher, friend of the show, which is just always so funny to say. Uh, friend of the show, like Jake Fisher. Something I get a kick out of. Uh, he tweeted out, Bucks assistant Charles Lee has been another name on Boston's radar for assistance behind Joe Mazzulla. Lee remains involved in several situations. Uh, Lee has been, I'm just reading out here, um, he played a career overseas. He's a coveted coaching candidate this summer. He's interviewed for multiple head coaching openings. Um, he interviewed for multiple this season. He also uh, was interviewing for multiple roles in the past as a head coach. So uh, if the Celtics could get Charles Lee, it would be a huge get. I don't see it happening considering I, I assume Sam Cassell is going to be the, the associate head coach, like the top in command uh, assistant coach. I mean, uh, in Boston. And so Charles Lee would probably want a position similar to that. However, it does make some sense that he could potentially leave Milwaukee because like you, like we talked about with Sam Cassell assistants usually follow head coaches. Uh, for the most part, you see a lot of these former Celtic staffers going to Houston. You see Sam Cassell follow Doc Rivers from L.A. Uh, to Philly. And now that Mike Budenholzer is no longer the coach in Milwaukee, it makes sense that Charles Lee could either search for a head coaching opportunity uh, or, you know, go be an assistant somewhere else. It wouldn't surprise me to see if he I, I don't know if he's interviewed it, but the Toronto job is still up for grabs. He could be a fit there. But if he doesn't land another top assistant job somewhere, which would shock me um, or doesn't get the Toronto gig. I mean, it would be a great get for Boston. I just don't know how realistic it is. 
Yeah, anytime you can add a coach that we know whose name is, <laughs> kind of a cool thing. Yeah. I think you make a good point with Budenholz's exit kind of leaves the door open for the assistants to kind of scatter. I don't think Budenholz is getting a new job this summer. No, I don't think so. So that leaves the question, what are these guys going to do? There are plenty of spots open in Boston. Boston's a contending team, a team that can use all the help it can get on the sidelines with yeah. uh, all the boys going to Houston. So why not? Charles Lee, take a seat, put on a super cool green zip up, quarter zip. And Might as well. Club. Might as well. Would be a cool idea. I uh, just wanted to mention that we don't have to go too more, uh, too much deeper into it. But uh, the last Celtics thing we have on the docket for today, Big Diesel, former Celtic, Shaquille O'Neal, <clears throat> in the news, <laughs> talking about uh, potentially breaking up Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. Uh, he was talking on the Big Podcast, which I just, I just kind of a sick name, like just to be able to, you're just the big podcast, right? It's just funny, but got a quote here. Uh, it's a long one. So let me read it out real quick. Listen, I like both of those guys and I don't want this answer to be taken the wrong way, but on the business, but the business of any business is to make money. Uh, I don't know what the salary cap is, but obviously they're going to be over the salary cap. And I know I can't, and now I can't get players around them. You're going to need shooters. You're going to need dogs. You're going to need another veteran. You're going to need to create a system where it works. I don't want five stars on my team. I want a guy I can go to every night. I want a guy that's going to lead, and I want three dogs, three others. I would prefer it if they were specialists, one to be a shooter, one to be a rebounder, one to be a fighter. I would business-wise break them up and use one of them to get the other pieces I want. I will say Tatum is the number one. Use Brown to bring in a Brown-type player and then just do it like that. So he he's... He's not necessarily saying break it up because it doesn't work. He's saying break it up, get a new shape, get a new team around Tatum and see if you can win that way, which I don't completely disagree with. You know my thoughts on I Jaylen, think we agree with but... disagree with that. <laughs> what do you mean? Collectively, we disagree because he's saying trade Brown for whatever you can get to put around Tatum. He's not saying trade Brown for equal or greater value, which is what no, you said. He said he said use brown to bring in a brown type player which brown i think type. is who well that's the issue he doesn't come up with who and who, i don't Shaq? necessarily Who's have it, out there I, I i agree with the concept of trading brown for another star-ish level player or even somebody like slightly worse than brown if you can get him and then also another piece that would also complement to well like i agree with the concept of Jason Tatum is the number one. You always go to him. And then you have enough role players and another like semi star next to him that is capable of step, <laughs> excuse me, stepping up and being that number two. Like, I mean, you look at Miami, obviously they have Butler and then Bam. So they sort of have the one, two, but Bam's not exactly the, the pinnacle of offensive talent. Right. You know what I'm saying? So Depends they have Butler. Day. Sure. They have Butler. And they have a bunch of a bunch of guys who can step up. They have Tyler Hero, who is the offensive specialist. They have Bam Adebayo, who's the defensive specialist. They have Caleb Martin, who we've seen can step up. They have shooters, right? And that's their thing. You even look at the Nuggets, right? They have Jokic, and then they have Jamal Murray. And you could say, oh, Jamal Murray's better than Jalen Brown. Jamal Murray's not better than Jalen Brown, blah, blah, blah. But the roles are very defined. Jokic, the star, gets the first touch, is a passer. Jamal Murray is the shot. Uh, creator he can take the outside shots that's his thing then michael porter jr down the line right they have very defined roles you look at the roles on the celtics it is jason tatum is the score bucket guy jalen brown is also the score bucket guy and i think that's a reason a lot of people throughout the years have been like maybe these guys should split up and so the concept of trade brown to get somebody close to brown's level that fits next to tatum a little better again i don't know who it is and like i'm just that's why i'm saying the concept instead of the actual thing in practice the concept of that trading Brown for somebody who might fit next to Tatum better, as well as another piece that could help the team. I agree with that. I think that could be an idea worth exploring, but in practice, I, there just really isn't anybody like that available. And at that point, I think you're be better off just running it back with these guys. Yeah. I think you make a good point. Like, yeah, Shaq, I would trade Jalen Brown for Jalen Brown and then more stuff. Yeah. It's a good point. <laughs> Who's out there. Bradley Beal. I know you said you don't know, but like Bradley Beal. No, Levine. Siakam, no. Siakam and Ananobi. I would do that package. I would do those two for Brogdon and Brown. Are you going to get that? No, I don't know. But I, I'm New like, Jerry's you wanted an example. So give me an guys. example. I'm just saying, like, if you can get two guys that might fit around Tatum better, that's probably Brown, the best thing that we've heard. But then you have to throw in Brogdon. 
fine. <laughs> I, I know you're fine with it, but at the end of the day, Brogdon was still important to the team. During the regular season, he won six men of the year. He didn't suck. He just had his forearm torn in the playoffs, and that's know, the last thing you remember. I think he's I think he's more valuable in trades than he might be to the Celtics, if that makes sense, because they have so many guards. I don't know. I think he's valuable if he doesn't tear his forearm. I think he makes I, an impact if he doesn't tear his forearm. I know I there think, were moments in the playoffs where he made mistakes that were not I, good mistakes. I think he's I think he makes an impact if he knows how to pass the ball. <laughs> but that's not his job. That's that's right now it's not the, his job. Stop. This is I understand, but that's why I think he's bad for the team. Because when he came to the team, that was supposed to be his job. He was supposed to be the extra playmaking that everyone said the Celtics needed after the Warriors game. And then he came here and he was Dennis Schroeder, but better. And that's not what the Celtics needed. That that's I would my say he's more Brown. I don't remember what I said when he got here. But what I would guess is it was that they needed more guard depth. They needed some more depth to come off the bench because in the finals they were relying on Peyton Pritchard. They needed more guys who could make the plays. scoring punch and there was nothing happening. They needed more guys who could create opportunities for themselves and others. And Malcolm Brogdon did fine at creating opportunities for himself, except when he was smoking every single layup he took ever. Because his forearm <laughs> was torn. This was not a playoffs thing. This was the entire season he was smoking layups. He shot the worst at the rim out of anybody on the Celtics and was a bottom 30 scorer at the rim in the league. Terrible. <laughs> terrible. <clears throat> However, I I just think the the Heat series left a terrible taste in your mouth. Fair, which is fair. I, I was saying this in the Philly series. We have the receipts. <laughs> I've been you, saying You this. were out on him, but I I think it's harsh. I I don't think he's bad for the team. I just don't. I don't think he's a good fit. I, I think he's just a better Dennis Schroeder, and Dennis Schroeder wasn't a good fit for the team. Well, that's fair. That's a fair stance. But, I mean, as far as breaking up the Jays, I agree with the concept of what Shaq is saying, but in practice, this doesn't work because there's really nobody like that on the market, and there's no perfect trade out there. To to further this point, Damian Lillard is an absolutely not. No, not no shot. Because he essentially would be the best version of Dennis Schroeder. Mm -hmm. a guard a, a small guard that can well, score and, i'll rephrase let me when i say dennis schroeder i'm not like trying to specifically knock non-star point guards because i don't think the Kemba no, Kyrie you're knocking point guard scoring either. point guards <laughs> exactly Kemba and Kyrie didn't work either and that's Kemba why you need a marcus smart or a Kemba was before, fine before but... he had no knee sure Kemba was fine but you can see why that iteration of the team didn't make the finals or didn't didn't win the championship because they didn't have guys setting up as well <clears throat> excuse me as marcus did for the jays um, but it's tough. Yeah. Like uh, looking at potential Jalen trades, like there's aren't many packages around the league that are available for what Shaq is talking about, which, like I said, the concept sure in practice, there, there's really not much out there that you, you can go for unless like, <clears throat> I, I was like thinking of the Grizzlies, like, could you get a, a great role player and Desmond Bain? And would you like that better? Because Desmond Bain is, probably more comfortable off the ball he wouldn't have to come like Desmond I, Bain <laughs> is somebody the Celtics could have drafted yeah that's the funny part too but like if you get Desmond really Bain our guys traded to get rid of Ennis yeah Cantor. yeah right um and again I'm not saying I would make this trade I'm not saying this trade would even be available but like if you you go to the Grizzlies and you say hey what's up give us Desmond Bain Luke Kennard and Brandon Clark Right, like Desmond Bain's going to give you twenty a night. He's a great shooter. He's probably one of the best shooters in the league. As is Luke Kennard, who will give you an extra wing off the bench. And then Brandon Clark sort of fixes that big man rotation where you have another guy in there uh, who can guard centers. You can give you the energy. And I mean, Timmy G would be ecstatic <laughs> if they brought he Brandon would Clark. Be. Do, do you know what guy. I'm saying? Like, you get that. You get a pick. And again, I'm not saying the Grizzlies would do that. If I'm then, I, I wouldn't do that. I would keep Bain because I think Bain's a really good piece for their system. But like, I, I can understand that sort of trade for the Celtics to round out things around Tatum, who can be the clear number one, etc. Like, does that make sense? The concept is what I'm talking about. I mean, I guess, but it just the team's going to get worse. Tatum will play worse because the defenses can throw more attention to him and not have to worry about Brown. Like, nobody wins in that situation. The, the championship I, window continues to decrease for the Celtics if you I disagree. Over, I don't over think that trade would make him that much worse. I th I think you're undervaluing Desmond Bain in that deal. I mean, Bain's fine. He's Desmond fine. Bain's 23, 5, and 5. He's fine. He's not Jalen Brown. I, he's not Jalen Brown, but I think he might fit better than Jalen Brown. 
He that, that all, all I'm saying, you know, again, I'm not. You I'm saw Jalen Brown play like shit against Miami, and you're overreacting. You've been you've been out on the whole year. You can't say that to me. You can say that to anybody else, but you can't say that to me. No I'm shot. I'm really speaking to Celtics fans as a whole it's when fine. I say you're overreacting. And again, but, I'm not. I'm not advocating for that trade. I'm just saying the concept of getting a slightly worse player, i.e., Desmond Bain versus Jalen Brown, worse player, right? Like probably like if we're doing tiers, he's a tier below Jalen Brown. You can't you can't go worse than in my you can't go worse. I don't care. And that, but then you get the extra depth. Like I I, I understand what you're they, saying. They had just about as much depth as they're, they're going to get this season. Then rearranging the depth, right? Like we're talking about trading Peyton Pritchard, like rearranging the depth where you have better depth pieces that fit better. It, 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 there's a lot of discussions that are going to be had, a lot of moves that are going to be made. I just like. At its core, this Celtics team struggles a lot with the offense at times because there's too much. He goes, she goes, or he goes, she goes, he goes, uh, then Jalen goes. Like, <clears throat> there's a lot of defensive issues. There's a lot of like, I mean, at times it looks like Jalen just wants to be the one A too, right? Like, if we're if we want to really get into that too, like there's times where it's just like Jalen looks like he's playing out there like he wants to be the guy and so trading him for somebody who might be more comfortable being the defined two all i'm saying is i'm not completely out on the trade jalen idea it would just have to be the right package and i'm not even saying that desmond bain thing is the right package i was just looking at desmond bain as a slightly worse player who might fit the system better because he's a more off the ball player that's all i'm saying what do you do when tatum goes out of the game I mean, that's just like asking, "What do you do when Jokic goes out of the game?" What's well, like, yes, but they also have Jamal Murray, and the Celtics would also have Desmond Bain. Like, I just think you're undervaluing Desmond Bain. Like, he's, offense. Well, they this would whole have thing a, is playing off the ball. Okay, then look at another team with like a, a star point guard. Like, what do the what do the Warriors do when Stephen Curry went off the floor? Well, it's right? supposed to be pool, but he sucks. Okay, so fine. The, the, the Warriors title team when there wasn't Durant and it was just Steph Curry. We'll and go back to last year's Warriors team. It was Poole. They were able to rely on no, Poole to I know. give them some I, kind that's of That's not offense. what I'm saying. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying look at the first Warriors team that won a title with Curry, Clay, and Draymond. Right? My point is you can win with other great guys. Right? Like you don't necessarily need a, a 1B who is so great at creating offense for himself. And for what it's worth, Jalen Brown's not the most consistently great at creating offense for himself. He's Let's not, not act like he can run an offense. He's and not perfect. Also, also if, if we're talking about what do you do when Jalen Brown goes, or Jason Tatum goes off the floor, I'm pretty sure the Celtics were like horrible with him off the floor, even this year, right? Like, I'm pretty sure they're pretty true. bad. And so again, I, I'm not saying trade Jalen for Desmond Bain right now. I'm just saying, I don't think trading Jalen Brown for, still an all-star caliber player that's slightly worse than him and better depth pieces that fit the team better is the worst thing in the world. I'm just not sure. I don't, I don't know what to do. I, I've said it a million times. I'm glad I'm not Brad Stevens. You sure. <laughs> I can, if I'm the Celtics, I'm not moving off of Jalen Brown unless I'm murdering somebody in a trade. I'm just not. Let me ask you this. In hindsight, would you have traded for KD? That's a good question. Actually. <laughs> You're right. No, it, it really is. I would say, yeah. yeah. I, I think if you I have think KD, so. it might have been the right move, depending on what else you had to give up. If it was straight up, yes, for sure. I don't think I would have. I mean, at the well, time, the you would have given up white, white. But in hindsight, probably not. In hindsight, if you want to do like. In hindsight, what have you, you have done, Jalen and Marcus? No. Okay. Even if you knew Derek White was going to play like this. Even if yes. you knew Derek White was going to play like this and could have played like this the whole season if he was the starting point guard. You know what I'm saying? Well, I don't think Derek White had much of a different role in terms of minutes. I disagree. I think he would have had a different role in the sense that the ball probably would have been in his hands more. I think I, again, Derek White this was is, good I mean, in every way that they asked him to play. Sure. And th- th- again, this is all hindsight. I'm just saying, like, I, I think depending on what the package was, if it was Jalen and, and you you could have gotten away with, like, I don't even know, like like Pritchard and picks or something, like not a core rotational piece, like a, a smarter White. I think you probably should have done it or could have done it. But again, that's all hindsight. And like you said, I, I don't envy Brad Stevens' decision making this summer. <laughs> yeah. Tough. I mean, having KD would have been cool. He is definitely somebody, one, that can be a, a 1A. Two. Yeah. Comfortable. That can fit into an offense, even if he isn't the focal point. 
Golden State. I mean, that's really all you could ask for him. He can he can compete in the playoffs. He's a proven player. Sure, in hindsight, yeah, you probably should have gave up Brown, but you didn't. And you're not, yeah. you're not getting KD this time. So, no, you're not. <laughs> better you you got to get you got to win the trade. That that's what it is. If you give up Brown, you have to win, and you have to win right away. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Like I said, I, I don't think they trade Dalen Brown. It sounds like they want him back, but it was it's an intriguing conversation. But we can move on to some NBA news. Let's let's move the banner here. We got the red and blue coming up on the screen. Uh, finals game three. We had some comments asking us to talk NBA. Just click on the Celtics podcast and skip here if you want to listen to NBA or listen to it and appreciate it. But if you want to listen to NBA, this is where it is. Timestamps are always in the description. Uh, Nuggets win game three of the NBA finals over the Miami Heat. They went back to Miami and they took them down. Uh, in what was a, uh, I thought the Heat were going to win. I don't know why. You did. <laughs> it, it, it makes sense. Usually like, game three is the spot for the, the lower seed to get some kind make of some noise. To land go back punch. home, right? Uh, and in the Heat's defense, they made some noise. They went down by a lot after they were sort of in at halftime. They went down a lot, and then they sort of fought at the end. Um, but when Nicole Jokic is putting up 32, 21, and Sounds 10. Sounds a lot like and, game one. Yeah, and Jamal Murray is 34, 10, and 10. There, there's really just not much you can do if you're the Heat. I have That's not tough. been on Twitter. But I would have to imagine the graphics of first time teammates have posted 30 point yep. triple doubles in the finals is all over the place because that is a crazy yeah. stat. I can't imagine that that's been done before. Again, I haven't been going through looking for how it. crazy is it. And I know the context of he's been hurt. Jamal Murray's not had never been an all star. Like, that's nuts. Like, he, he sh- he's going to be one next year. But like, he he's very clearly the best player in the league who's never been an all star. Put it that way. Right. <laughs> Right, like in the in the contest, is he the best player in the league that's never been an All Star? Yeah, I think by far. Like CJ McCollum's the other one you can think of. Gillis Alexander's been an All Star. Yeah. Uh, ooh, this is like a good. <laughs> <laughs> right, like look at it. Like Middleton Celtics... was an All Star. Yep, Drew Holiday's an All Star. Holiday. Garland's been an All Star. Mitchell Mobley. You want to look at Mobley? Like no, man. Mobley's not good. Jalen Brunson, yet. Brunson's up there. Did Br- I thought That's Brunson made it this year? Mm, no, uh, was he? No, Julius Randle was. Jalen Brunson wasn't. Oh, uh, well deserved. <laughs> Guys, uh, it was more of a positional thing, <laughs> not better than the other. But Jalen Brunson's another good pick. Damn, but I, I think Jamal Murray's right there. Yeah, I think it's him. But it really, just regardless. goes to show they're just handing out all stars. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, good win for the Nuggets. The Heat tried their best. It's just it feels like the Heat did they really have well they, they made some. I runs, think we saw point. them like, try their best for seven games against the Celtics. And my we po- have not seen their best since. Kinda unfair. My point is they made their runs, they did something, but I don't think the Heat have the consistent scoring enough to beat a Nuggets team who's gonna pile it on like they do. And you laugh because they had it against the Celtics, but yeah, like realistically they look like speaking, the best team on the planet. Well, realistically speaking, like f- how many four out of those seven games, the Celtics held them to enough points where they should have won. They just shot like crap. Right. And so <clears throat> as much as you say the heat consistently, like the heat put up 90, uh, 94 points in this one. How many times yeah. did they ha- have that many against the Celtics? Like, I'm pretty sure the Celtics held them to sub hundred in like three games. And so I just think the nuggets are a consistently better offense because they have Jokic and Murray. Well, and Miami is one of the worst offenses all season. Exactly. Make yeah. no mistake. Yes. So it does make sense that they're not able to compete with Denver, who has just been carving the, teams the best all team spread. The they're ridiculous. They're so good. The, the Nuggets shouldn't have lost game two, realistically speaking. Right? Yeah, it was a game where Miami shot a crazy percent, and Denver still almost won. They almost tied the game to send it to overtime. Murray hits yep. the front and back rim, or just the back rim on a game tying three. It almost went down. Yeah, wasn't a bad look. Uh, Gabe yeah. Vincent today, two of ten. 
Also, I mean, we talk about Nuggets. You're going to talk about Jokic and Murray. Christian Brown just had 15 points off the bench. It was just he. You know what? Christian Brown made the Heat feel like the Celtics did when Caleb Martin was kicking their play. <laughs> right? Yeah. Like, see, was I was going to say, I'd be really mad if Christian Brown, who spells his name incorrectly, uh, <laughs> scored 15 points in, on seven of eight against the Celtics. But I think I'd actually be more mad at Caleb Martin doing it. Actually, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think where I'm still Christian mad. Brown, where was Christian Brown taken in the draft? I'll trivia for you. I'm going to look it up to make sure I don't know. I want to say around 35. 21. First round pick, Christian Brown. There yeah, you go. I mean, him and Kansas won a national championship, so it's not that crazy. He He's did. what, the second You're best right. guy on that team? Behind, He's 6'7"? Uh, I thought he was 6'5". kid on the six, jazz. Three. Uh, Oche Agbaje, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> he was pretty good. No, yeah, I mean, good for the Nuggets. Like, it, it just seems like they're far and away the better team. And Max I know you could say... Yeah, tough. I know you could say that about the Celtics too, but realistically speaking, I, I think this Nuggets team would have beat the Celtics. Like, if I, the I, I made the finals and lost to the Nuggets. It would have been crazy. I think like, they not lost not crazy as in it maybe shouldn't have happened, but crazy that they would have lost to a team that wasn't like a dynasty. Like it felt like the Celtics the Nuggets, were ready to go. I'm not saying it's they're not be. a dynasty right now. That's what I'm saying. I think I think they could be though. I I genuinely think like that's you, fine, and you very well could be right. But today on well June eighth, twenty twenty three, they have they're not, not won a title. They're not. I, I do want to look at it in this scope though. Like this Nuggets team, when fully healthy, for the like, and I know it's a 50-50 split because they weren't fully healthy for two years. Like the last time they were fully fully healthy, they made the conference finals in the bubble. <laughs> this year, they make it all the way to the finals, and they look like they're going to win it. And so if Jamal Murray and Michael Porter Jr. stay healthy, they're going to lose Bruce Brown this summer, I think, because they can't stay healthy. But, like, I know we talk about the Western Conference as deep. They steamrolled <laughs> through the Western Conference, right? Like, this, they beat the Suns in six. They beat the Lakers in four. They beat the Timberwolves in five. I don't think any other team in the Western Conference could have beaten them in a seven-game series. And I'm not saying teams in the West aren't going to improve. But this Nuggets team is also going to improve because it's not like they're 32, 33 either. Like Jokic is still in his prime. Murray's still in his prime. Porter Jr. is still relatively young. Like they have pieces like this is probably and I'm not saying they're they're not going to be like a Warriors, but this is probably the closest thing to a this team is going to be right there every single season. Like they're Bucks West. I think, and I, that's a terrible example because the Bucks just got bounced in round one. But do you know what I'm saying? In the sense that, like, I I think this team well, you know is what's going funny to be is really really good. The last two times the Celtics were fully healthy, they made the conference finals. They went to the finals, and after game three, they were in position to win the finals. Like last they were. year, yeah. yeah. I mean, and literally through three quarters of game four, they were in, they were literally about to win the finals, but and they blew it. They did blow it, and I don't think Denver's going to blow it. That's the difference. No, and I'll also say the Nuggets are playing probably not as good of a team as the Celtics. They're not playing but... <laughs> three time at the time champion Warriors now four time. And that's the side of Steph point. Curry. Um, I don't know, man. It it, it feels like obviously we're going to say this because we're biased. Like the Celtics or the Bucks were the favorites to play the Nuggets in the finals, and the Heat went on this run. Like it's hard for me to imagine in hindsight and. I'm, I'll pat myself on the back. I always had the Nuggets making it out of the West. Like I know they were yep, probably I the didn't. most, they they were probably the most slept on one seed in a minute, right? Like in terms of people just picking oh the Lakers yeah, or the Grizzlies. Yeah. Sure, okay, but like <laughs> in terms of people picking a team to go to the finals, like people were more spread. Like it, it was probably if you look at it in a pie chart, like it was probably the most evenly spread out pie chart in terms of Lakers, Suns, Warriors, Grizzlies, etc. You know no, what I'm saying? Picking the betting and odds were crazy. In hindsight, this is a team that looks like they're going to be at least in the Western Conference Finals or better for like probably a minute now. And, and, and you you don't classify that as a dynasty, but like you look at the Celtics, like they're a safe bet to be in the Eastern Conference Finals almost every season since X amount of years ago, right? You look at the Nuggets, they look like they're ready to go on that sort of thing right now. And it looks like we're probably going to be seeing a lot. Of, like, I would be shocked if we don't see a Celtics-Nuggets Finals in the next five years. It would be cool if the Celtics uh, got back to the Finals. It's true. It would be cool <laughs> if they won. That would be uh, Denver, by cool. the way, shot 27% from three. Today. And they still killed them. Yeah. Still killed them. Only took 18 threes. That's crazy. Yeah, imagine. 
Only <laughs> shooting 18 threes. What, what's, when you're not shooting them well, what that's like. Well, it would also be crazy if the Celtics could make layups or anything. But That is a um, big ask. Yeah. Uh, big win for the Nuggets. I mean, Jokic is... I, t- I I'm sticking with he's the best player on the planet. If he if he even if he even if he loses the finals, I think he's the best player on the planet. Oh, if he loses the finals, he's not. Why? Giannis is who lost in round one. I mean, <laughs> you're losing to Jimmy Butler, dude. I mean, you can't be as if Giannis didn't also. I don't know who it is. It doesn't feel like it's Jokic if he Jokic. loses. I feel like I feel like all the hype dies if he loses to a Miami I'll put team it, in the I, finals. I, I, w- <laughs> You say I, I understand. Like... I understand what you're saying, <laughs> but you don't get it. Like I do get all, it. I'm just all of the discourse you. about Giannis not being the best player in the world right now is partly because they lost to this Miami team. Yes. So it th- that is going to factor into if they don't win the finals, people are going to be like, "How great can he be if he lost to this Miami team?" Does that I also mean think it's part that it I also... discounts Giannis in the Bucks not getting past them? No. I, also I don't think big... know who it makes the best player in the world, but it makes it very hard to crown him the new best player in the world if he doesn't beat this Miami team. If he doesn't beat the Miami team and he plays like crap, then sure. But if he's putting up yes. these numbers, okay, he still loses. Right? Like, <clears throat> that's my and thing. He's he... putting up Giannis... 32, 21, and 10. Yeah, yeah. Giannis Fair. was not very good in, in that blocks. series. And I know he got hurt and well, he came back. back but Giannis, broken. still. Um, I don't he know. didn't I, fail. I, I, I'll put it this way. I think it was close between Jokic and Giannis like throughout the season, et cetera. And I still had Giannis. We've, we've talked about it and I said it was Giannis, but like to go on, like, I, like I said, last podcast, I think the bigger thing with Jokic is he's not amazing on defense and he's not a playoff player. He's clearly a playoff player. He's not a freak <laughs> athlete. Uh, yeah, that's, I think that's sure. But like, it, it doesn't matter if you're a freak athlete, if you're doing crazy shit like this. Well, um, no, that's like one of the things that makes Giannis so intimidating. It doesn't mean that Jokic is not, now intimidating it doesn't mean he's not taking over games that's not what i'm saying that is one of the things that makes Giannis how great Giannis is sure and Jokic is a good shooter and Giannis isn't right like i think that's the same thing sure but my point is like with you no i know i was i was talking about uh, my point was i was talking about the knocks on Jokic, though not like what makes Giannis good the knocks on Jokic mainly not as good on defense as Giannis, not a playoff player because Giannis has won a title clearly Jokic is a playoff player now, even if he loses, which again, for what it's worth, I don't Jason think Tatum is not a playoff player. <clears throat> not yet. I guess, but fuck off. Let me talk. Like, I'm shut being the fuck facetious. Up. You're pissing me off. I'm trying to say something. Um, He's been great in the playoffs this year and he's been pretty good on defense too. And so if you take those into account, like, would you rather have, not as good on offense as, as Giannis, but is a lead on offense in his places as Jokic or the better on defense. Like it's obviously close, but I, I think at least in the short term, you know, small view lens, like for now you can crown Jokic as the best in the world. It's crazy that Jokic is doing this in the finals though, is the point. Like this is, this is nuts. The numbers are nuts. It's crazy that both of them already had a 30 point triple double in the finals in yes. the same game. Agree. Michael Porter uh, Jr., one of seven. Not great. Not Good great game, game for him. Uh, Caleb Martin, four of nine. Still not 50% from the field. <laughs> Doesn't matter if they're winning for the Nuggets. And uh, yeah, that's tough for, for Caleb Martin. But um, next piece of news we have from Tim McMahon of ESPN. Talking about Monty Williams' departure from Phoenix. Still doesn't mean Aiton's going to stay. They, he still thinks uh, excuse me, Aiton will be traded this summer. Um <clears throat> a name that's popped up in a lot of trade rumors for the Mavericks and for, for other teams around the league. Interesting. I, I, I mean, you sort of think that Monty Williams gone. I know you talked about this, like, Oh, eight will probably stay yep. now, but it doesn't sound like it. That was my hypothesis. That's going to be a hot commodity on the trade market this summer. Yeah. Nobody wants eight in Dallas quite like the media. He is in every single mock trade. <laughs> it does make a lot of sense. It does make sense. If you're, if you're whipping out the crystal ball, it makes sense. Dallas is a giant hole in the middle where uh, Jason kids just playing a carousel of centers. Uh, it doesn't make a ton of sense for him to go to Indiana. To me, I know we talked about this. If I'm Indiana, I'm just kind of hanging on to miles Turner and saying, whatever he just had a career year. Sure. Uh, but I, I'm kind of surprised to see that they're still going to shop Aiton. 
this is a big wind horse, what's going on in Phoenix type thing, because now Chris <laughs> Paul's getting quote unquote waived or he's not being waived. Essentially, they don't want to play, pay Chris Paul anymore. So why don't they want to pay him? I feel CBA like they're doing a uh, the answer. You know, the led GM meme. I feel like this is a led Durant and like him and Booker are just like, hmm, let's do this. They're let's moving do this. Guys let's around. do this. Let's do this. Yeah, pretty much. Well, this Marianne. new owner Ishby is an insane person. He's just, he's just coming. Everything. He's like slapping everything on the board to see if it sticks. Mm-hmm. You know, what would be uh, interesting. They if need you're... to trade for KD. That's what he said. And they trade for KD <laughs> and they got their roster and then they're not deep yeah. enough to make a playoff run. Yep. Would you, if you're Brooklyn, Actually, never mind. I was <laughs> that's funny because they just be swapping rosters, but I was gonna say like Claxton, Dorian, Finney Smith, or something like that. Like that could be interesting, but that would just th- how funny would that be? Mikhail Bridges, Cam Johnson, and DeAndre, and then just chilling in uh in Brooklyn. <laughs> um, yeah, and maybe maybe not. I-, I had to think about that twice. Um, the Bulls yeah. have been named like maybe do we think the bulls make sense like it would have to be like a vucevic sign and trade but that's the cap space gets weird because then it would hard cap the Suns. like that would get all tricky i feel like that doesn't make the Suns better but then again if aiden's being a big baby and you're not getting anything out would of you do anyway well like vooch and patrick williams or vooch and another little depth piece you apparently know like, patrick williams is going to pick up like to sign a hundred million dollar contract or something like that keith talked about it keith talked about something along the lines of like he, he wouldn't be surprised if Patrick Williams got a similar deal to the one DeAndre Hunter got, which was like four years, um, 95 million. This is Keith Smith of, of Spotrack, um, Spotrack, which I mean, like, if you look at the raw numbers, doesn't necessarily make sense. But like, in terms of what they've shown in relation to the opportunity they've gotten on their teams, it makes some more sense. Um, but yeah, he, he could be in for a big payday next, uh, this summer or next summer. But yeah. It would make sense with Phoenix. I guess you can kind of look at Patrick Williams to try and replace Mikel Bridges in yeah. a way. Partially, yeah. Would you look at Charlotte? Would Charlotte do something there? Or they have Mark Williams, but... like Maybe that's a way for Phoenix to fill the void by Aiton leaving, get Mark Williams back if Charlotte wants to do that. Maybe. But they'd also have to get something else. Like, what is Phoenix going to get? Terry Rozier? Yeah, like it would be like Rozier, maybe instead of Mark Williams, Rozier, Nick Richards, and Cody Martin for Aiden. Yeah, you just hope the other Martin twin wins you a playoff series. <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, the Clippers? Would the Clippers want a center instead of Vucic? Like Zubac? Would they do like. I feel like Zubac is just perpetually solid. <laughs> yeah, I think v- Zubac is fine for them. Like he's fine. <laughs> he is the stereotypical starting center. He's a big oaf. He doesn't really hurt you. <laughs> But he's not making like a diesel yeah. impact. Yeah, it, it doesn't feel like there's a ton of great landing spots for Aiden. Like it just doesn't feel like there's, there's some Celtics. Like, a great place you can. Oh, land. the Celtics have to give up for Aiden. It would probably have to be like Rob, Rob or Horford plus Brogdon plus Pritchard. I, if I'm the Celtics, I don't want that guy. Well, I, I am the I Celtics, and I don't want either. that guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think that's great. Would you do like? Do you think Aiton's an upgrade over Mitchell Robinson? Like, would you put a pack- package together for New York, New York? The only upgrade in that sense is that he can stay healthy. You saw how impactful Mitchell Robinson was when he was playing at full strength against the Cavs. He had Mobley, of people have crowned the next KG, looking like a five-year-old, and Allen was lost. Would you do Aiton and Landry Shaman or something just for matching salary matching purposes for, like, Clint Capella, John Collins? Would you trade... The, the, the Capella to Phoenix thing has been my favorite out of <laughs> all the about it. eight and things for Phoenix, just because you're unloading that guy and bringing in somebody that has proven to make an impact on the floor. You saw how much of a pain in the ass he was against Boston, in the playoffs. Yeah. Plus you get John Collins back who people kind of like, or even if he, it was like Bogdanovich instead of Collins, like you just get another. I like the Bogdanovich one. That was the one last time. I was like, "That's a guy you can bring off the bench and give you points." He was another yeah. pain in the ass in the Boston series, and you're you're essentially not having to lose much because I'd say Capella is just as good as Aiton. He's he's just as Ooh. useful with, with the guys you have on the floor for Phoenix. Maybe just as useful, but I don't think he's as good. It maybe fits I mean, better. I think it's a better way. I think he yeah. maybe fits better. I just think if you're Phoenix, you can't really go wrong there. You're essentially, yeah, in that case, trading Shamit for 
whoever else the other. I don't know if he's. I don't know. Aiden's weird because he's such a traditional center, and he kind of needs like to be this third option on team, second, third option on team in order to be effective. That's what I mean. It's weird. Like Capella <laughs> rules for that, where you can just throw him lobs, and he's gonna crash the glass mm-hmm. for you. Yeah, yeah. Um, also, let's. Uh, we I, I'm we messed something up, or I did because I, I forget, skipped over something. Uh, we're going back to Celtics land quick. Um, <clears throat> sorry, to skip back in here, but Steve Bopet. <laughs> had a report um, that I completely skipped over. So thank you for listening through some NBA stuff. If you're a Celtics person, you can see you can see it in the in the timestamps. You just look there. Um, according to Steve Bopet, the Celtics are looking to retain Jalen Brown and Grant Williams this summer. They want to bring them both back. Uh, the quote from the article is: Let me just find it here real quick. I have a million tabs open as I'm trying to navigate everything. Um, basically, they're they're going to try to find a way to bring them both back right like they, they don't want to lose either of them obviously the cap stuff is tricky um but they don't have an interest in losing one of those guys just because they're going to be getting a lot of money right it's gonna the, be fire when grant goal. makes five million dollars yeah <laughs> uh, i hear fi- or the quote from bullpet bullpet wrote this not like a source uh the celtics are not wishing to engage in the game of roster jenga will find a way to retain both, right? Like they want to keep a roster together. They don't really want to, you know, mess things Which around is good. too much. <clears throat> good. Uh, the GM to Bopet, from everything I've heard, and I know Boston wants Brown, they see him as a big part of their future, but if things get messed up there, major injuries and things like that, you have you have to have the ability to make trades, but it sounds like they want him. As far as Grant, another quote from an exec or a GM or whoever talked to Bopet. All I know is that he filled a number of different roles for them and other teams are seeing the same thing. It's going to be interesting to see how Boston deals with him because it might say a lot about what they think they need to do to get past a playoff loss that never should have happened. So they want to bring them both back is basically what Bopet is saying and what sources are saying, which I think is a good thing. I think we both talked about you probably should bring them both back. I know I've been more out on Brown, but there doesn't really look to be a trade out there that's worth it to trade him. And you know I want Grant back, so I, I think both of those are good things. Yeah, I want Grant back for the right money. I don't really know <laughs> where they're at in terms of the seventeen and a half million dollar threshold that strikes down upon these teams that overspend in the new CBA. <laughs> I think if you're the Celtics, you need to stay away from that for now. Unless you're dominating, which I don't you're think not. that kicks in until next season, though, right? I, I believe it I starts July 1st. Oh, the new CBA? Yes. Okay. Gotcha. I thought it started next season. So Keep if I'm the Celtics, I need to keep away from that for now until you have the formula perfected. You don't have it perfected yet. You just squandered away essentially two chances of the title last year, kicked it away this year. I mean, you lost to Miami, you lost to Miami, but I mean, you're what plus or I mean minus three something going into the series against the heat should have won the series. You should have, you had all the momentum, even, even after losing the first three games, you should have won game seven. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a game where you can watch it and be like, if they just did this one thing, right. (laughs) I mean, they, they got killed, but yeah, you should have had a better effort in that game. Regardless of what happened to Tatum, the whole sell on this team is how deep the roster was. They should have been better. And they, they all no like showed in game seven. So they tried. They were just terrible. <laughs> you have some shifting to do. I think it's good that they don't want to play roster Jenga because I think that could be a dangerous game. Yeah. But allowing yourself the flexibility to sign players with the middle level exception to do sign in trades to trade draft picks down the line. Those are all important things as you're trying to perfect what you have. Because mm-hmm. I think we can all agree that they do have something great. It's just not there yet. For whatever mm-hmm. reason, it's not there. I'm not a doctor. I'm reason. not a basketball guru, guru. I watched them lose and not win a title the last two seasons, and I still can't tell you why. Yep. Brutal. Other than I, I they think... shot a bunch of threes, which which <laughs> is the common denominator. Not really. They miss. They missed a bunch of threes. Is the issue the common denominator? Um, yeah. No, I, I think it's good they're bringing both those guys back. I think both have an important role on the team, uh, and I think bringing Brent Grant back in particular because I think Jalen is almost a foregone conclusion unless he doesn't resign for whatever reason. Um, bringing Grant back helps balance out the roster more because you already don't have a lot of wings. 
You already don't have great big man depth. You have so many guards losing Grant for nothing. Th- that would really hurt your depth at those spots. And so I think you need to bring him back for that reason. But um, <clears throat> we skipped over that. We can move back in to NBA talk. Uh, let me switch, switch, switch the brand again because I messed up. Um, Damian Lillard talking about some some potential landing spots. He's always said he's he's loyal to Portland. Uh, he didn't necessarily say like, yeah, I'm leaving this summer, but they were asking him on Showtime Sports, the last stand. Uh, he was asked about the speculation of a potential trade to the Heat, Nets, Knicks, or Celtics, et cetera, et cetera, in which of those teams he would most like to play for. Um, Lillard immediately said, Miami, obviously, uh, saying that Bam is his dog, and then also said that Mikhail Bridges is also his dog, so he would he would open a trade to the Nets. And realistically speaking, like, I think those probably make the most sense for a fit for Dame. I think the Knicks would probably put together the best trade package of all those teams. And as we've discussed, I don't think the Celtics are necessarily the best spot for him. Um, just, just fit wise, but yeah, keep uh, his yeah. sixty million dollar contract away. <laughs> sure, that, that's yeah. what I say. Mm-hmm. Miami makes the most sense. Mm-hmm. Miami is in the finals. Yep, as a stupid frat boy looking Tyler Hero sits on the sideline, <laughs> and the reason why that's important is because they're seeing all the success again while he's not playing. And that proves to them that he is expendable. <laughs> he's somebody who is going to make twenty-seven and a half million dollars next year. A lot of money. A big chunk of the salary match that would need to happen in order to get Lillard to South Beach. It and would you have Duncan Robinson and others tri- that you can throw yeah. in. It would and probably Matt be Lowry. Yeah, it would probably be Hero. Duncan Robinson and like Caleb Martin or and Jovich, something like that, like something like that to, to add them together. And Caleb Martin is a big loss. <laughs> Maybe. I mean, they can also try to keep him in like sign and trade a Struce or something. I don't know. But the, the point is, you'd probably have to start with hero Robinson and then add salary from there. But the hero piece is probably the most intriguing piece Portland can get from anywhere. Would you rather have hero Robinson, Jovich, et cetera, or like, RJ Barrett quickly Obi Toppin. Like I, I think heroes. I I don't even know if heroes like more intriguing than RJ because the defensive thing. But like at the very least, even if you think heroes like Miles better than RJ, like quickly and Toppin are probably more intriguing than anything else you get from Miami outside of hero. I think if I'm Portland and in the situation that they're in, I would say the Knicks package is more intriguing because Plus, they can draft Scoot Henderson at three, which is. Sounding like is going to be yeah. where he lands. The Hornets want Brandon Miller. Plus Sounds the Knicks like have, wants to take Brandon Miller. Knicks have a lot more picks to offer too. Because the bla- the Heat can only offer, I think, maybe one or two firsts and a swap. The Knicks could probably offer up to six first round picks. Not that they could, but like they have control of their entire draft stock and they have other like not as good firsts from other teams around the league that they could throw in. So they could they could like overload the package with some first round picks in there. Yeah. I think if you're Portland, that's the best way to fill out your roster around your new and draft pick. As far as, I mean, the Celtics offer we know would probably either be, if it's not Jalen Brown, which I don't think like it would be, they couldn't really get anywhere with a valuable trade offer. It'd be like Brogdon Smart. But the, the other one, the Nets, could be like, maybe you offer them Nick Claxton, Cam Thomas. Those Suns picks could be valuable, depending on how long that course stays together. But I, I really think it would probably come down to a Knicks package or a Heat package. And of the two, I'm probably leaning Knicks package, although the fit of Brunson Damiller defensively seems disgusting. Doesn't make <laughs> a lot of sense. No. But the Lillard thing is weird. Miami is a team that it makes the most sense for them to bust the bank to get him. I, as much as it stinks, like Miami is probably best suited to inhale or in, in like make room for another star player this summer. That's what I'm saying. I mean, that yeah. hero thing is a game changer for them because well, not, he's making not even, so much money. Not even the hero thing, but in terms of like, they could just accept another superstar coming in and being the one and no one else would care. Like Jimmy Butler wouldn't care. Like Oh, like uh, meaning they can just seamlessly fit wise. fit in. Exactly, yes. Yeah, that makes sense too. I mean, they don't even have to bring in superstars for that to happen. They can bring in yeah. guys that J. Cole told them to sign. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Did you see J. Cole was at the game? Oh, he's terrible. <laughs> Don't you like his music? 
I do, but I can't like it anymore. <laughs> All right. Last uh, thing I believe we have is the Wizards might be headed for a rebuild. F- fi- finally. It's about time. Uh, <laughs> the Athletics, Josh. Haven't Robbins, they been trying to rebuild? <laughs> the Athletics, Josh Robbins says many rival executives around the NBA expect Winger to undertake a full rebuild, if not this offseason, then within the next year, which is like about five years behind when everyone else thought they should. I, I think they just brought in a new GM is why it happened. Um, that team is in, is the epitome of no man's land. They, they, they might need a rebuild more than any other team in the NBA right now. Genuinely. Yeah. That wizards team is a mess. They're paying Beal a lot of money. He has a new, no trade clause. Mm-hmm. So they can't even just like send him somewhere for whatever they want. He has to be down. And if Beal's down to get traded somewhere, you're probably not getting the best draft capital back at the very least. Well, I think if they give him a list, like realistically, it's probably could be one of those teams we just talked about for Lillard. Like he would probably make a lot of sense in New York. He would probably make that New York team really good, right? Like because Beal's not going to give you the one A on a team, but next to Brunson, next to Randall, as much as you don't like him, next to RJ Barrett, like or even if they trade well, if RJ I'm Barrett, next, like, I'm trading Randall for Beal if I can. I think it would have to be RJ. I think it would probably be RJ quickly or Toppin and then picks and then Fournier to match salary. Like that's a pretty good, like Brunson, Beal, Quentin Grimes, et cetera. Like that's a good team. Or if you throw Beal in Miami for Tyler Hero, like that's a good team. Like Beal is the perfect second option, but can be the first option on certain nights guy for a team. That's already a, a solid playoff team. And I, that's where I think he could really make a team better, especially if they're defensively sound, like the Knicks can be in the heat are. If that makes the sense. Knicks, the Knicks angle is the most interesting. If you Google Bradley Beal, the first article that comes up is Bradley Beal pulled off a generational heist owed $207 million. <laughs> yeah, it's terrible so there, that's all you need to know about Bradley Beal. Wizards paid him way too much money. But like I said, in the right situation, I think he can be a winning player. I just don't think him being the one A on a Wizards team that is destined for forty one and forty one is that. Um, they will pay brutal, him but... fifty seven million dollars in twenty twenty six. As crazy as that is, that's not even going to be a lot of money. Then I know it's <laughs> terrible. We're going to have to really shift our our. Well, why do you care? It's not your money. <laughs> well, it'll be terrible for the Celtics in some way. I guess, yeah, the CBA keeps rolling through. But the CBA, the, the money and the tax lines will continue to increase. And I think once the new media deals and everything comes in, that they'll get a big bump in, in salary and stuff. So I, I think it's tricky right now. And I, I, to be honest, I think the CBA gets adjusted in the next few years too because it is t- it's not even good for like either side, really. Like it's bad for the no. team and it's bad players for players. Players because... superstars are going to get the shaft. They're going to exactly. be like making $10 million because they can't afford to be paid more to have a competitive team. And probably what's going to happen is you're going to see what happens in 2K where good players are just kind of sitting out there because no one wants to pay them. But they it's don't true. Pay Isn't that money. a weird thing in 2K where like, yeah, let's say like Kelvin Johnson is just a free agent because nobody yeah. wants to pay him. Very weird. I, I think the CBA gets adjusted for the sake of the players and the uh, the teams because the teams obviously are restricted too, but uh, for now, we'll see what happens. And the Wizards, please rebuild. Just just, just cut, cut it down. Get it over with. But uh, for the last portion of our show, you know what's happening. You know it. You love it. Here is Matt the Rat. Welcome in, buddy. How are we doing today? Uh, I don't have anything off the dome, but I will think. Do you have a rat list to start with you want to go with? Rat list? Maybe Zion. Maybe Fat Zion is a rat. <laughs> if you don't yes. know, Zion is going to be a father. However... Mm-hmm. It seems as if Zion may be becoming a father with somebody that is not his only lover. Good way to phrase uh, on Twitter it, yes. today, let me find the correct name. A woman was none too pleased when Zion announced that he was expecting, well, his child. girlfriend. Somebody is expecting a child via him. His child, yes. His child. Uh, Mariah Mills apparently is a adult actress. Good for and him, she yeah. tweeted like twenty times complaining about Zion uh, impregnating the other woman. Yes, because they were uh, having 
go, just go look at our Twitter. I, yeah. I don't really feel like <laughs> saying them all on the podcast because it gets graphic. But uh, yeah, I it's, let uh, you spit in my mouth last week when we effed. You could have told me that you had another blank pregnant. How was that going to work? Moving us both to New Orleans. You think I would have found out? Tag Zion. Crazy. Crazy. This little taste. If you want more, you go to the profile. Yeah, that's uh. Or just search Zion on Twitter. You'll find not it. a good look for Zion. Not a good look for the guy. Very Zion. Uh, not tough. a lot of good good looks happening at all. <laughs> Zion kind of down on his luck. It's tough. So mm. tough. Yeah, not 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 great for him. Uh, Ratless, what do I got today? Um, oh. <laughs> It's it's tough to put a specific thing on the rat list, but I dropped my phone under my bed today. I woke up, right? I, I woke up, um, didn't sleep well for whatever reason. You ever just wake up? Like, I slept a normal amount of hours, but I just woke up. Like, the phrasing is like, I woke up on the wrong side of the bed. Like, I just woke up not feeling great. I was like, this sucks. Like, I don't want to be awake right now. It was obviously, like, my normal time, and I slept a normal, like, I, I was like 1230, and I had slept a normal eight hours, so I was fine. But, like, I just didn't want to be awake. I wake up, my phone slides underneath my bed, and my room is a mess. And so I'm sitting there for like 10 to 15 minutes, not exaggerating, just with my hand under the bed, trying to feel around, trying to figure out where it was, going to the side, shining a flashlight, realizing I don't have a flashlight because my flashlight is my phone. It, it was a terrible way to start the day. It, it, was, <laughs> it, was, it was awful. Also, rat list, again, not necessarily a, a thing to put on the rat list, but like, I have a second monitor right here next to me. It's a TV, right? Yeah. It's like the TV I had in college. I have my keys on my desk. And for some reason, one of my keys was like sticking up. It just like got stuck on something. And so I, I'm like trying to grab it. I grab it, pokes the TV, breaks the TV, breaks the screen, cracks the screen. The screen is done. It, the screen is done. I have Ratless we had a, keys. Yes, Rattless Keys. We had a spare TV up in like a room somewhere. So I grabbed like a spare TV. We had like an old one. So I, go. I've got a big one. However, the TV is bigger, which you're like, oh, they're good for you. Not does not fit on the desk. Does not fit on the desk very well. It's giant, way too big, not very convenient. So Rattless Keys, absolutely. Yes. Man, other Rattless. Short, might be a short Rattless today. I'm struggling. I haven't had an eventful couple of days. <clears throat> Rattless uh, Henry. Okay. For going to school three hours away. So I have to drive or you have to drive three hours for his graduation. Well, that's right. Weekend. You have to go away. You have Rattless. to miss ball. Yeah. Disaster. Terrible. Oh, very upset. No good. Well, anti Ratless Henry for graduating college. Congratulations. Love you, Henry. Uh, great. Uh, don't fall he asleep. Stayed graduation. Awake. I, I had to beat for you. him at graduation <laughs> to see if he stays awake. <laughs> had to beat you to it. But uh, Ratless the drive. Ratless for you for going to school three hours away. Tough. Yeah. Should have went to school online. Exactly. <laughs> anti rat list i'm sorry i'm on a roll now my graduation i probably talked about it then since it was like covid and it was like just getting over we had a drive-through graduation i remember this so good we I drove up go. we waited our turn did you all you didn't go to graduation no yeah we drove up um and just like you got to walk across stage and go home uh graduation should be on the rat list though they're terrible graduations suck they're so boring you sit there, you sit there, listen to speeches you don't care about from people you'll never talk to again. <clears throat> you get your diploma and then you're done. Ratlist, my sister's school, Grace, she had a quote unquote sophomore pinning ceremony. It was just a graduation for being halfway done with college. Talk about a waste of four hours of my life. That it, it was the worst. I hated every second of it, of it. It was terrible. I wanted to go home, didn't want to be there, but I went because it was my sister but you like you got a 50 percent. that's an f i'm sorry like <laughs> there's, there's no graduation for that uh anyways do you, do you have more rat list i i went on a run there on a little roll i feel like there was new jaw stuff today oh i didn't see any new jaw stuff today i didn't oh see yes any... hmm. jaw has claimed that the gun from his Instagram story was a toy gun. So Ratless the friend or Ratless the gun or Ratless jaw? What are we, who are we Ratless in here? This is, this is, I agree that should be a Ratless, but like who gets the Ratless here? 
report. John Morant's camp claims the gun from Instagram Live was a toy. Quote unquote. This is from the Breakfast Club, the the morning show. Mm-hmm. Adam Silver is still going to go through with the suspension looking like it should be 30 games, even though the league knows it was a toy gun. My follow-up question to John Morant's team. Why was he brandishing a toy gun? <laughs> <laughs> is he just really into nerf battles now and he wanted to make it look realistic? Like what come on? That's that's the weakest excuse I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> I just can't I believe was... that. I knew I saw something about John on Twitter today, and I think Zion kind of eclipsed him, and then Chris Paul came in and really just finished it off. But yeah, That's fake bad. gun. Per no John. shot. It was a fake. I don't believe that for a second. <clears throat> Not a single liar. Second. Liar pants on fire. For yeah, John. no shot. No shot. That was a fake gun. Uh, that's all the rattles I got, though. I don't know if you have any more. I'm exhausted. Today. I have nothing. I have some work to do, and it's already almost 1 a.m., so it's going to be a long night for you, boy. But thank you guys for tuning in. We appreciate it very much. Time for Sam's eyes to go real wide as we put the green back on the screen. <laughs> Subscribe to How About Them Celtics. We appreciate it. Um, follow us on Twitter, all that good stuff. But, Sam, I'll get to that. I forgot what I was going to say, so I had to filibuster. Uh, leave a rating on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Five stars. If you don't want to leave five stars, go be mean to us in the YouTube comments, as some people apparently listened to last time because I got called fat a lot <laughs> in the YouTube comments. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> it was it was a lot i usually like laugh at the youtube comments and i did respond to the people like making fun of me this time stuff, you it, cried <laughs> yeah right no but it was just like it was just people going yeah look at this guy's 300 pounds the reason why you cough so much is because you're fat i was like this is just a very weird thing to like not what you expected when comment. you came to the youtube comments <laughs> not at all but uh regardless we appreciate you guys for listening we appreciate you guys for commenting uh, and the cool thing about YouTube comments is I didn't ban those guys, but there are people in the past. If you're banned in the YouTube comments, you can keep commenting. It's just that nobody but you will see them. So you can have fun talking to a brick wall. Uh, thank you guys for listening. I'll have Sam wrap us up. Yeah, thank you very much for listening or watching. If you're watching, you're on the YouTube. Make sure you subscribe. Leave a like. Maybe a, a less mean comment. And can we all like you comment hit- and be nice to us this week? Let's Let's try nice comments this week. What do we think? You say what you want. You hit the notification <laughs> bell. Uh, make sure you get our daily uploads to your notifications. 5 a.m. This will be up at 5 a.m. Uh, whatever we cook up for you, the next couple days will be 5 a.m. On top of that, you can actually hear this on the streaming services as all the podcasts are. Spotify, Apple, make sure you leave a follow. Make sure you leave five stars. And you can leave a nice review there. The other daily uploads are YouTube exclusive. So again, make sure you subscribe to the channel. You can follow us on socials at How About Them Seas, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook. And you can follow Jack at Jack Simone NBA on Twitter. And you can follow me on Twitter at Sam LaFrance NBA. That's it for us. Bye. Tic-tac-o. Come on.